we're asked to find the complement of the following expressions. This is going to be a three-part video because C and D are slightly longer than A and B. So A and B are going to be one video and C and D are going to be their own separate videos. They will be right after this one in the playlist linked below the like button. So starting off with part A, we need to find the complement of this. We know that this is just equal to F and we know that complement is equal to inverted. We also have this nice table right here. We're really only going to be focusing on De Morgan's theorem though for inverted in this problem. And this table is from a previous video. That's not mine, but it can be found in one of the other videos. So for part A, we're going to take this F and then we're going to set it equal to our A, B naught plus, and this plus is an or, A naught B. And then we're going to have our naught operator over our F because it's the inverse or the complement, and then because it's inverted or it's the complement, and then we have this naught right here, which is the inverted of our function. Now, to write this, we're going to look at our De Morgan's law. And this looks like this right here. We have an A and a B, and we'll just say that this is A and this is e, B, and we have an or, or a plus in the middle of them, and this is all under one inverter or complement. So we're going to look at this, and then we're going to look at this, because that is going to be our outcome. So we're going to have our A times B, and then we're gonna have the not over both of these. And then we are going to have this as an and, the dot means uh, multiplying, and we're going to have the not over our A not, and then B. So knowing this, we're going to go another step. So knowing this, we are then going to look at these parts individually. We basically have an and in the middle of these two because they're being multiplied. And since we have it like that, we are going to look at this. And in looking at this, we are going to separate it. We are going to have our a naught plus our b naught naught. And then this is being multiplied. So we can just put this in parentheses. We have an and here. And then we're gonna have the a naught naught and then we're gonna have plus our B naught. So knowing this, we can rewrite our F with the complement equal to, we have an A naught in here. We know that a B naught naught is just a B, so we're going to have a plus B. We have our next parenthesis, an A naught naught is just an A, and then we have our plus naught B. So this is going to be the answer for our part A. Now for part B, it's going to be a little bit different. We can see that we have this part that's being multiplied and we have this plus out here. But we're gonna start off very similar. So we're gonna write out our F just like normal. We have the V as a naught times the W plus the X times a Y and then plus Z naught. Now we're gonna have the complement over our F and the complement over our entire function. So this is going to represent kind of an A and this is our B. Knowing this, all under the naught, we are going to look at this right here. So looking at that, we can see that we're going to be looking at this entire part and we're going to be splitting it up. So we have the F naught, and this is equal to, we have the V naught times the W plus the X, this is in parentheses, and then we have our Y. Then we have this naught operator or the complement over it. We are then going to have the Z as an and, so multiplied, we have z not not. And now, when we look at this, we are going to look at this part. You might be saying to yourself, well, how do we know which parts we're supposed to look at? Well, the parts that we're supposed to look at is any part that has this continuous complement over it. You see, when we did part A, we broke the complement up here, so we only looked at these individual parts. And then once we broke the complement up here, we just finished by simplifying or simplifying these two parts. So now we're gonna do the same thing for here. We're basically done with this Z, and now we're going to look at this part right here. So looking at this part, we have, we'll say that this is A, and this is the part right here, and we have this B right here. So we have two knots being multiplied together. That is going to look something like this theorem right here. So we can rewrite this out. We then are gonna have that our F naught is equal to Simplifying this, we are going to have the bar over our V naught times the W plus X. And then we're going to have a plus Y naught. 
and this is all going to be multiplied by the z naught naught, or we can just write z here. So that's what this is going to look like. We can continue further, and we're going to be looking at this part now, because we have separated the y. So we're going to have our f naught equal to, this is some a plus b under a naught. So we're going to be looking at this first theorem. And after we look at this first theorem, we're going to say, well, we have this v naught times our w, and this is being and, so multiplied by the x. And then we have the naught over both of these, and that is from this. And then we're going to have the plus y naught, and then we have our z on the outside. We're going to come down here to continue this. So what we're looking at now is this part. So we can see that we have an a and a b basically underneath a naught. And this is and, so it's being multiplied together. So we're going to be looking at the second theorem again. So when we write this, we'll have f complement is equal to, we'll have a parenthesis, and then we are going to have a, remember, we're looking at this bottom part. So we're going to have the v naught naught plus the naught of our w. And this is when it's separated. We have this x being multiplied to both of them. So we're going to have to put that outside of a parenthesis. It's going to be an x naught. We have our plus y naught. And then we know on the outside of all of this, we have our z. So now we don't have a continuous bar over any of them, and we can just simplify. So we are going to have that our um, f complement is equal to, we see we have two parentheses here. We know that a v naught naught is just a v plus the naught of our w times the naught of our x, of course, outside of these parentheses, plus our y naught. And then outside of all of this, we have our z. So that is how you would solve for part b. For part C and D, again, they're going to be in the playlist linked below the like button. They're going to be slightly different, so it might involve more analysis into them to try and solve them.